So we are uh, at the end point of our webinar today. So now I would like to request uh, uh, the chair of this session, uh, Professor Dr. Mohammad Ruhul Amin. He's uh, the uh, current uh, global president of uh, uh, World Muslim Heritage Research Center USA. So I would like to uh, request uh, Professor Dr. Mohammad Ruhul Amin to deliver his concluding remarks. Okay, Khalid, can you? Okay. Yeah, Rakib, can you stop the screen sharing, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, please. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa ba'd. I have the honor to preside over today's international webinar on Islamophobia Global Perspective, organized by Wall Muslim Heritage Research Center, USA. First of all, we are showing our profound thankfulness to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us chance to hold this awesome international webinar with a group of shining stars and intellectuals joined us as guest speakers of today's webinar. They are well known and recognized in their academic fields. We would like to extend our sincere thanks and gratitude for their contribution. Uh, because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in hadith, man lam yashkuri nasa lam yashkuri Allah. Who is not thankful and grateful to mankind, he is not grateful to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. Especially the keynote speaker, our young uh, researcher, Professor Dr. Muhammad Saidul Islam, for his brilliant presentation. Sir, we would Dr. like... Islam. For its brilliant presentation, so we would like. Okay, we would like to thank our guest speakers, Professor Dr. Nakib Muhammad Nasrullah, Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Miza Ghalib, uh, Brother uh, Muhammad Abdul Rakib, uh, for their contribution as guest speakers. Also, at the same time, I have the pleasure to thank today's moderator and Global Secretary of All Muslim Heritage Research Center, Brother Khalid Ahya, for his tremendous job and contribution for organizing as, uh, the webinar, inviting guests, and making this program a success. I am also grateful to the global audience who joined from all over the globe. My dear brothers and sisters, the Islamophobia, concept of Islamophobia, uh, Islamo, uh, uh, Islamophobia it is very important and very, uh, um, a very uh, a famous doctrine. Islamophobia refers to the uh, irrational fear, prejudice, or discrimination against Islam and Muslims. And brother, uh, Professor uh, Saidul Islam and brother Mirza Ghalib already mentioned about this. I don't want to repeat their uh, summary just I'll be saying a few words about uh, Islamophobia, uh, global perspectives uh, uh, in my viewpoint. So uh, if we look at the background of Islamophobia, uh, then we will be getting three things. Islamophobia, early period of Islam during Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Though there was a, not this term, they were not using this term at the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but uh, the companions uh, and, uh, and the uh, Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were faced so many challenges and persecuted by, uh, by the enemy of Islam. Even though they came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua for us. We cannot tolerate what they are doing. We are being persecuted. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that, okay, not yet. Because uh, people before, before you, 
they were persecuted. They were uh, cut into two pieces by uh, by Saw, and they were uh, put it in grave alive. So uh, be patient. ولكنكم تستعجلون ولكنكم تستعجلون and then Sahaba they migrated to uh, Ethiopia, Habasha and uh, to Medina and then Rasulullah sallallahu established a, a Islamic um, uh, welfare state. This is the beginning stage of Islamophobia, Islamophobia. and then historical factors and number three is contemporary factors. So historical factors is includes two things. One is historical conflicts, which is a long history of um, conflicts between the Muslim world and Western powers, such as crusade and colonialism, this thing. And the second thing is, okay, in this regards, Orientalism, uh, which some brothers already mentioned this thing, the Islam, uh, which refers uh, Islam to the Western academics and cultural tradition as exotic, inferior or dangerous. So this was the negative scenario, negative picture they painted against Islam and Muslims. And finally, this is contemporary factors. These contemporary factors includes global terrorism uh, and media presentation and propaganda against Islam and Muslims and political discourses. These three things uh, includes in contemporary factors uh, uh, in Islamophobia. So global terrorism, the rise of global terrorism, particularly acts committed by individuals or groups claiming as act in the name of Islam has contributed to the association of Islam with violence and extremism. And this terrorist attack, such as 9-11 London bombings or Paris attacks have uh, reinforced negative Okay, stereotypes and quelled Islamophobic sentiments. And also media, you know, all this media is uh, picturing Muslims as a negative, negative uh, scenario of Muslims, always they are picturing. Also political discourse. So these three things basically uh, work against Islam and Muslims. And the main challenges we are facing uh, by Islamophobia is discrimination and exclusion and uh, stereotyping and prejudice. And number three is hate crimes and violence. So this thing uh, already by this, uh, Saidul Haq uh, already mentioned uh, some points, uh, but how to overcome these challenges of Islamophobia. And Alhamdulillah, we got a lot of, uh, mashallah, new things from this uh, webinar. Our brother, uh, Dr. Uh, Saeedul Haq and brother Mizar Ghali, brother Nasrullah and brother uh, Raqib already mentioned this thing. But uh, to, the, uh, to me, well, I have some points I want to share with you also. So number one, education and awareness. It should be given top priority because we Muslim, we don't know uh, our past uh, uh, history. So we, sh we have to know and we have to educate our peoples about uh, Islam. What is Islam? Islam is a religion of peace and how Muslim can be, uh, can be dangerous because they start with Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And they are praying, they are starting Salat, salat Allahu Akbar. And they are saying, ending Salat with Assalamu Alaikum. So peace be upon you. But this person, how will be dangerous for others? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that uh, uh, the no one will be true believers until unless he will be taking care of his neighbor. Okay, if neighbor are unhappy, then he's not true believers. So this Islamic education and awareness, we should be, uh, we should be spreading this thing. And number two, fostering interfaith and community dialogue. Brother Dr. Nasrullah already mentioned this thing. So we have to uh, arrange more interfaith dialogue to exchange our ideas and views and to make easy coexistence in a society and community. And number three, combating misinformation. So this is counter false narrative and, uh, and misinformation. We should be 
we should be speaking out about this thing and combating misinformation about Islam and Muslims. What brother, uh, uh, brother Rakib already mentioned uh, in depth discussion in this regards. And brother uh, number four, promoting diversity and inclusion. So uh, we have to we have to embracing diversity and create inclusive spaces where people of all backgrounds, including Muslims, feel welcome and valued. Our brother Mirza Ghalib already mentioned this thing uh, very nicely and well organized way. Alhamdulillah. And number five, advocating for equal rights and protection. So support legislation and uh, and engaging with the policymakers and human rights organization to address instances of Islamophobia effective, effective OA. So, and, and last one is speaking out against Islamophobia. So we, we irrespective of our color, ethnicity, nationality, our skin, everything, uh, we should stand up against Islamophobic acts, speeds, or policies, or uh, hate crimes. Uh, in, you, know, you know that United States, the, uh, the, there's a famous slogan, Black Life is Matter, because uh, there are a lot of racism in this country, but in the, the, but officially there's no racism. So you, we should use our voices uh, to challenge prejudice and discrimination whenever you encounter it. Support, we have to support individual, in, individuals and communities affected by Islamophobia and uh, amplify their voices. So my dear brothers and sisters, so this uh, seminar, uh, Islamophobia Global Perspectives, this is the beginning. Our brother uh, Rakib already mentioned that a lot of people, they are not uh, speaking out about the main causes of Islamophobia. They are they are uh, holding seminars, symposiums, and they are promoting a lot of things for financial matters or for their political agenda. So uh, uh, we hope that we should know uh, how to address Islamophobia, and it requires a long-term commitment to fostering inclusivity, promoting understanding, and challenging discriminatory attitudes. It requires collective efforts, empathy, and understanding. By working together, we can create a more tolerant and inclusive society. So while Muslim Heritage Research Center is trying, is uh, committed to hold this kind of uh, seminar so that we can be aware about Islamophobia and main causes of Islamophobia, how we can overcome these challenges in our society. So thank you very much all our uh, keynote speaker, our guest speakers, our moderators, our audience for your time and efforts. May Allah bless upon you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this seminar uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us social awareness about Islamophobia so that we can, uh, we can answer, we can speak out with wisdom, and we can do uh, with uh, knowledge, we can reply to them with our uh, patience. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khairan once again from the All Muslim Heritage Research Center. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.